Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin, and welcome back to another LEGO Harry Potter review. Gringotts is just a day away, and to celebrate I thought we'd take a look back at set number 75978, Diagon Alley. This set includes 5,544 pieces, originally retailing for $399.99 when it released on September 1st of 2020. Now unfortunately, this is going to be one of those sets that suffers from a price increase of $50, bringing it up to $450 instead of the plain $400 that I paid originally. In this video, I hope to bring to light whether or not it is still worth it at that $50 price increase or not. I still think this has has to be one of the best Harry Potter direct to consumers to date even though it is not an 18 plus set it's just filled with so many references and just the detail in this set is extraordinary and I don't think they could ever top Diagon Alley any other way than they did here. Looking at the box art as I said this is not an 18 plus set so you'll find a nice background behind your build which I really love when Lego used to do this it's unfortunate that they're just playing white or black backgrounds behind these sets nowadays. You'll also find all of your minifigures named from the bottom corner, similar to as you would see in other Harry Potter sets at the time. Flipping around to the back of the box, we get a closer look at the interior for this set, as well as some of the other little details with your minifigures interacting. Opening up the box, you'll find some loose bags in addition to a plain white box containing everything else. Counting up the bags, we have a total of 20, each with at least two, bag number six featuring three. We also get a loose bag with some of the bigger pieces, four loose base plates, and an unadvertised mystery box in addition to your stickers and instructions, which will be in a plastic bag. Each of the four builds within the set include their own instruction booklet and sticker sheet that correspond to the location. Compared to modern day instructions, I like the personality behind these, how we get that blue background there, which you would have seen a lot within these Wizarding World of Harry Potter sets. And as I said, each of the instructions will focus on an individual location. One thing I really like about the instructions is that we get information from both the front and the back. From the front, you'll find some details about that particular shop that you're building. And from the back, this one actually includes a recommendation on how to display this set. And we'll get some information from the designers about your characters included. I really like that they include that. And again, just the whole Harry Potter design team together, at least for this particular time period. I think we've seen some new people join and some people leave here. Most notably, Marcus Besa went to work for Disney's Lego team. And some of those sets have just been some of my favorites for this year, 2023. And you'll find this information in various different languages. You can pause and read if you so desire. Number three, we have some information about Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor, as well as Flourish and Blots. Number two features some information about the daily profit, as well as quality quidditch supplies. From the back of book two, you'll also find your piece count, which goes on for quite a few pages there. I mean, really a lot of pages. And finally, book number one, you'll get some information about the set as a whole. Welcome to Diagon Alley. And then Ollivanders and Scribblis. To start off our minifigure selection, we have Harry Potter the Boy Who Lived based off the Chamber of Secrets. Now the torso print for this figure was exclusive to the set at the time, though did appear within a minifigure pack later down the line, and also this torso piece you'll find on both Ron and Hermione in this set. Like the little hoodie though, that's a cute detail. Facial expression is also brand new for this particular set, and you'll also find it on the other Harry minifigure included in this set, where you get a nice smile from the front. And then something that much better fits the Chamber of Secrets there, where he's all covered in soot, confused with broken glasses just falling out of the wrong fireplace. Ronald Weasley, also exclusive due to the arrangement of parts, little Gryffindor robes, front and back printing, short legs to represent year two, and the same facial expression introduced back in 2018 with the smile from the front and the scared look from the back side. Hermione Granger, same torso as you'll see for Harry and Ron there, front and back printing, facial expression same as 2018, and 2018 introduced hairpiece, 
with the smile from the front and the scared look from the back side. I'm fairly certain this is our first appearance for Ginny Weasley within the reboot line for Harry Potter, not counting the collectible minifigures. We get a brand new torso print, front and back. I'll remove the hair piece so you can take a better look at that. In addition to the facial expression, which is the reuse girl facial expression with the smile and then the sad look on the other side. Hair piece is great though, that's returning from back in 2010, used on the original Ginny Weasley minifigure, but otherwise, I just think that she should have gotten her own facial expression, and I'll say the same about another character in this set. But before we move on, I did want to talk about her accessory, which is going to be Gilderoy Lockhart's Magical Me, which unfortunately is a sticker, but it is what it is. I absolutely love that they referenced this. One other little nitpicky thing is just, I wish that they included something within the book, but you know, this just existing is everything to me. And I just wish that they also referenced his other books in there, but you know, still it's just really amazing that they were able to create this as a sticker. And you'll also find this as an accessory with Lockhart himself. Draco Malfoy, though exclusive to this set at its release, is no longer exclusive coming into other sets in 2021 and 2023. We see the newer style Slytherin robes, which you'd see more of in 2021, the following year. Front and back printing, you see the little hoodie. Facial expression will be the same one introduced in 2018, with the kind of unhappy look from the front, and the scowl from the other side, still with the Yellow hair piece, which you'll see on all Draco Malfoy minifigures. Eh, it is what it is at this point. As much as I'd love a tan hair piece for Draco, I guess this is just the future for Lego. Moving away from Chamber of Secrets for a little bit, we have one of our Weasley twins, Fred Weasley. You can tell that it's Fred because we have this dark red tie as opposed to the orange tie that you'll see on his brother. We also get a unique facial expression also introduced within the collectible minifigures the same year with a little smirk from the front and then a laughing face from the other side, short haircut style piece. I think the outfit looks really nice in brown, not gonna lie. And this is also the same exact torso piece which you'll find on the modern day Weasley's Wizard Wheezes released this year in 2023. George Weasley, as I said, different shirt and tie compared to his brother, as well as different facial expression introduced within the collectible minifigures the same year, with a slight grin from the front, and then another laughing face from the back side. Love these facial expressions for Fred and George Weasley, and the torso prints are just really amazing to see that LEGO went all out and made them unique to each character. Back to Chamber of Secrets, we have their mother Molly Weasley with a brand new torso print front and back with the little hoodie there. No skirt printing, which would have been nice to see, but isn't really necessary. Facial expression will be the same one used on her figure within the burrow the same year, which is the Helga Hufflepuff facial expression, which I don't really think fits Molly Weasley, though they keep using it. Um, we have this other facial expression, which is even worse than the other one. The hair piece, I think, is fine for Molly Weasley, at least for now, I think it's fine. I just think if they do make that direct-to-consumer burrow, they have to give Molly a brand new facial expression. It's really the one thing that I would love to see out of that set. Finishing off with the parents and probably my least favorite figure in this set, we have Lucius Malfoy. We do happen to get a brand new torso print and we even get leg printing, which is a common reused leg print that we saw during the time period for a lot of other Harry Potter figures and even went into Star Wars and Marvel, but the big problem with this figure is the facial expression, which is a reuse of the Lex Luthor face. It does not fit him by any means and it just, it looks bad. The one that they made in 2010 is just so much better. They could have brought that one back and everyone would have been happy. Hopefully one day we see a brand new facial expression for Lucius. It's definitely something that I think should be on the table. I'll also remove the hair piece so you can take a look at the back printing. Just continuing his outfit. Torso piece is everything about this figure. It's just, again, the facial expression is the biggest problem. And also just the hair being yellow for the Malfoys is something that I'm not really too much of a fan of. But we do get a brand new hair recolor for his character, which I guess is nice, but still, you know, this is the worst figure of the entire set. Could have been better. 
Mr. Ollivander makes his third appearance in minifigure form in this set. We get both a brand new facial expression and a brand new torso print. Torso now being in dark red instead of the brown that we saw the last two times. I think the dark red fits a lot better. We also get a really interesting accessory with his minifigure, that being the first ever wand box. It's really cool that they made this unique piece for this set. You'll find more of them within Ollivander's shop, but you can easily open this up with a 1x3 tile to reveal a wand inside. I think that's really cool. I love how they made that. Pretty sure this particular piece also comes in two other sets at the moment. Looking at the rest of his design, we do get that double-sided facial expression, one with a nice big grin, and then a more worried look for when the Death Eaters are trying to drag him out of his shop, which they're not going to reference in here, but still nice that they included that shocked face from the other side. A surprise for sure, but a welcome one is Florian Fortescue, the ice cream shop owner, and they gave us both a brand new torso piece and a brand new facial expression for his character, which they did not need to do then. They could have used those prints on Malfoy's face or even Molly's face for that matter, and maybe even give Ginny a brand new facial expression, but hey, we got Florian Fortescue who appears for like two or three seconds within the second Harry Potter film. You really see more of this character within the Prisoner of Azkaban book, or at least you read more about his character. Torso print looks fine pretty standard there. You get a nice ice cream sundae with that sundae glass there which was newly introduced from the collectible minifigure series. We also get a spoon to eat the ice cream which is a nice touch. Facial expression surprisingly would appear again within the Daily Bugle the following year or the year after that. Double-sided facial expression though. Get an unhappy look. Who would be unhappy to be serving ice cream all day? I don't know. You also get the same hair piece that you saw for Ollivander, just recolored in the dark brown, which is really cool to get it in that color. A weird inclusion, but a welcome one nevertheless, is the Daily Prophet Photographer. We get a brand new torso print and a brand new facial expression, which is also double-sided there, with an unhappy look from the front side. And then a very happy grin from the other side once Harry enters the photo as well. Gotta get all that publicity, am I right? Additionally, he comes with this oversized camera accessory, which is really annoying because it makes it so that he can't actually stand up correctly unless he's standing on studs. And we also get some back printing. Hair hat combo we've actually seen on another minifigure before, I'm pretty sure. It's interesting to get it for his character. I don't really like the gray hair mixing with the black eyebrows and everything. I don't know how accurate that is, to be completely honest. But still, this is a character that we see a lot within the book, so I do appreciate LEGO including him within this particular set. No doubt the highlight of this set is still going to be Gilderoy Lockhart. We get both a brand new torso print and a brand new facial expression, which you'd later see appear in 2021 on his next minifigure. But what I think sets this minifigure apart is that they did give us this really nice cape, which has the yellow on the inside and then the lavender on the outside. It's just really amazing. I love this cape piece. It just really transforms this figure and is probably what's missing on the 2021 version of Lockhart, to be completely honest. I think if that version included a cape, it would have been so much better than it is. But, you know, just I think the cape really changes and transforms this figure and makes it the best that it could be. Flipping around the facial expression, we get a nice smirk from the front. And then better to fit some scenes later on in the movie, we have a nice worried look for Lockhart. I really like this facial expression. Hopefully we see Lockhart appear in another set somewhere down the line. Also flip up his cape so you can take a look at the back printing. And just like Jenny Weasley, we get a copy of his book. No prints inside there either. Second to last minifigure, we have Harry Potter again. Now if you don't know where this Harry Potter came from, he came from the mystery box. We get a brand new torso piece for the time, which would later on appear in an advent calendar and a book and in the next Diagon Alley set, I believe, Gringotts. We get printing from both front and back, which looks great. I really like this torso print for Harry, just really amazing for the time period. Facial expression will be the same one you saw for the other Harry minifigure included with the happy look, which much better fits this outfit. And then we have yet again this facial expression, which again, 
fits the other Harry much better and is just a wonderful facial expression. Really happy that they made something unique for Harry instead of just reusing the 2018 face. Sorry everyone, we're ending on a reuse minifigure. Rubius Hagrid also comes within that mystery box. We have the same exact version introduced within the 2018 Great Hall, and this will also be the same exact version which you'll be able to get within Gringotts. You only get the printing from the front of the body, and you get those Technic pin connections for the arms. Regular minifigure hands, which can move back and forth. Nice pink umbrella for the accessory. I'll remove his legs, so you can take a look at how those are connected, just the regular short legs for his minifigure. And we also get a hard plastic beard for his minifigure, unlike the soft plastics which you'll find from 2010 and before that. Facial expression, you'll only get the one, which I think works very well with the beard ensemble. And I'll just spin him right around so then you can see that. This set is extremely hard to get completely in frame. It's a really, really long ensemble. The one of the perks has to be that each of the shops are built separately and are connected via Technic pins, so you can separate Weasley's Wizard Wheezes from Quality Quidditch Supply and the Daily Profit, you can separate that from Flourish and Blots and the Ice Cream Shop, and you can separate that from Scribblis and Ollivanders. Before we go through all the shops, I did want to talk about the mystery box, which this is the first and only time that LEGO has ever done this, where they included something unadvertised within a set as bag or I guess box 21. This included a small little display plaque with a printed quote saying, Welcome Harry to Diagon Alley, as said by Rubius Hagrid. And you also get the little LEGO Harry Potter logo. I love this print, it's really amazing. And even just getting the figures to go on top of it, both Hagrid and Harry, I just think it works very well. You can see the studs where you can place your minifigures, building on the side and also just the little hinge in order to move the quote to adjust it however you so desire. And I just think this is a great centerpiece, especially if you were to place this down and then just have the two rows of shops and Gringotts right there in the middle, even though that's inaccurate, it should be Gringotts and then all the rows of shops here. And then what are they going to do here? I don't know. I think they wasted their time releasing Gringotts. They could have put something on this side of it, but they wasted too much time. The first two shops that you build are Ollivander's Wand Shop and Scribblis, which is the writing equipment store. Now, Ollivander's is probably the most noticeable out of these. Scribulus, I don't even know why they included it, but I mean, it's accurate to the source material as far as what's placed together. So, I mean, I appreciate them including something just completely random. I really wish that they included a shop owner with this shop as well, but unfortunately that would have meant more new prints or just more reused prints that would have been just ugly and wasting space within this particular set. Starting from the outside of Ollivander's, I love how they did the windows here, though I think they can do them even better than this, considering what we saw only this year for the Weasley shop. I really would love to see LEGO tackle this shop again at a smaller scale and just have those curved windows just because having them straight on like this, I mean this is just an older building technique at this point because LEGO has made so many more window pieces since this set and I think they could really capture these curves a lot better than what they're doing here but still for the time I just think they did a wonderful job and even getting the yellow tint to it which is really cool that they were able to notice that little detail. We get some stickers that say Ollivanders, makers of fine wands since 382 BC. Ollivanders again split between two stickers on those slope pieces. You can also see the little grates down here, which is really interesting. And also just, again, the sewer system underneath these places. It's really cool that they include that little detail. You get the little sign with the O for Ollivanders. Get the sticker from both sides. Get some owls from the very top. Brown one, same as 2010. And then new leaf for 2020, we have that tan owl, which is really cool to see it appear within this set. From the front of Scribblis, we also get a number of sticker details here, just some various advertisements. We get the name of the shop from the very front, again separated by two stickers, which is kind of weird. 
front door for both of these. I believe some of the door colors in this set are brand new. This one might have been new for the time period. Little torch, very nice little detail. And one other thing that I got to appreciate is just the ground where you get some studded room for your minifigures as well as a little bit of the cobbled street. Not as much of the cobbled street as I probably would have liked to have seen outside of the shops just because, you know, there really should be more between them like when you sandwich these shops together like when you have this one facing this way and then another one facing it there's not as much space in between as i would have liked finishing off with the outsides of these shops i did want to point out the technic pinholes which help you to connect these to the other shops you get them from both sides just so then it doesn't really matter what order you put these in though there is a correct order and speaking of those technic pins we also get them from the very back of the shop this allows you to connect them back to back one another. Lego even went all out with the roofs here by including plenty of studded room for your minifigures as well as the chimneys. And an owl floating in mid-air. This was also the year of the open wing owl, which we haven't really actually seen very much of as of recently. It's holding one of the Daily Profits, common print from 2018. And also just have to appreciate the shaping of this roof over here. Just the attention to detail that the designers brought when it came to this set is extraordinary. On to the interiors. We're going to start with Ollivander's shop. First thing I wanted to point out is how we actually get a way to go up to the second level. And I absolutely love that they included it so much better than what they did back in 2011. And I love how you can hide this and also just bring it out whenever you want, give you more space on the ground floor, or just have it completely folded into it if you have this back-to-back -back with another building. I think that's really great that they included that option. You'll also see that we have plenty of storage within the stairs there with some more wand boxes in various different colors. Um, we only get the one color for the actual wand box piece, but they do happen to reference some fake ones there in various different colors. We have the cash register, which is a little hard to see. We get a sticker on that, as well as a little scroll there, ink and quill, and more wand boxes from the very back. It's really cool how they include all those different colors for them. Not exactly sure if some of those colors are accurate, but it's a nice touch. On the top floor, we do happen to get one loose piece, that being this extra ladder to just reach the higher shelves over here. I guess you can bring that downstairs if you want as well. We'll get a little working desk for Ollivander, where we see another wand box, and then a little torch. And we also get a little chair so you can sit Ollivander up there after a long day's work at the shop. Looking through Scribblis, this is where you can buy your ink and quills. We have various different quills of all different sizes and shapes. The regular feather piece and then the smaller quills, which you typically see in like the forestman hats. We also have a scroll within the window. Looks to have some sort of like astronomy reference on it. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe just some random writing. Then from the top floor, it looks like we have a small little area for your owner of the shop, which is not included within the set. Cute little couch, little fireplace, and also a unprinted Ninjago skull, which I thought was really interesting back in the day. Potion bottle and a little dresser. Quality Quidditch Supplies is the tallest of the builds, mainly because of the chimney. You also get a small little bit of the Daily Profit down there, which is an interesting inclusion. I definitely wish that this was completely quality quidditch supplies i think that would have been so much better especially considering how far it like goes off to the side there again i'm not exactly sure how accurate this is because it is loosely based off both the actual film set as well as what you'd see at universal moving around quality quidditch supplies just like flourish and blots we get some brand new prints on these wall elements for the windows you get a number of those to just form the front of them and i think they look great Pretty much the same exact printing style, it's just done in a different color, that red to match the quality Quidditch supplies, which looks great. You can also see a little snitch and some quaffles up above the sign, and I just really love how they did this shop. 
such an upgrade compared to what they did back in 2003, which is a set that I'm slowly working on piecing together. I don't know if I'll get a review for it out this year or not, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But overall, the building techniques for this front part of the building is extraordinary. Another thing I have to appreciate is a reference to the Prisoner of Azkaban book, which you see Diagon Alley in. We have the firebolt in the window, and I love that they included that. Oh, I already said what my favorite reference is, didn't I? You know, I think this may even overtake my liking of the Lockhart book just because, you know, it's a reference to the actual Harry Potter book and it's great that the designers were able to include it in here. Speaking of the front of the Daily Prophet, get some stickers there for the name as well as for the door for the Daily Prophet, which is, I guess, nice that they do that. And you also get a sign from the very side. Another wanted poster for Sirius Black. And your Technic pins. Yet another wanted poster for Sirius Black. They really want to find him, but he's not going to be found in this set, sorry. Speaking of the roof area, we do get a print on those window pane pieces for the newspapers covering up the windows, which we actually saw introduced within the Stranger Things set, so that's cool to see it return here. We have a little grate, which you can actually open up. Probably my biggest pet peeve with this set has to be some of the prints because some of them were a little faded as you can see here. I mean, we were in a pandemic. I understand that being probably one of the big problems as far as quality control, but you know, still for something that you're spending $400 on on release day, it shouldn't have prints like that. I mean, I never replaced them because I don't really care. They look fine to me, they're common prints, and it's not like they're gonna gain any value. Starting with the interiors for the Daily Prophet, just because it's smaller and there's not really very much going on, I do really love all the different references on this board here, just the, again, that serious poster showing up again. Golden Snitch still missing. We have the Prophecy, I believe, referenced here. He who must not be named returns. Really cool that they have all those different references across the films. Daily Prophets in a bin. Spider web with a spider just because nobody's gonna be in there. And then I also have to show the attic up here which has a little rat, some boxes, and some more of those Daily Prophet prints. The boy who lived! Before we take a closer look at this interior, I did want to take a look at the minifigures inside, which are these dummies posing in these Quidditch uniforms. This was the first time that we ever got Quidditch robes for both Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. These were brand new prints for the time period, but we'd later see them return in other sets. And this particular one also comes with an Apolly bag currently, which will be a gift with purchase for the coming Gringotts set as well, Cho Chang. White legs, as it should be, unlike what we see within the Quidditch trunk. And we'll take a quick look at the Hufflepuff one, which currently comes on the Cedric Diggory minifigure, which came within a book, which is really odd that that was the other way that you would have been able to get this, but, you know, can't complain at a $7, $8 book to build up a Hufflepuff Quidditch team. One of these days, LEGO will make a minifigure pack or something cheap enough to army build these Quidditch robes. I just think it's something that... Is really necessary but it's cool to see for the time period that they newly introduced two brand new quidditch teams we had never seen before and i'm so happy that these exist and so happy that lego is continuing to bring them into other sets now on to the interior we have some folded up quidditch robes we have the blue for ravenclaw red for gryffindor green for slytherin and yellow for hufflepuff get a little doormat with qqs quality quidditch supplies some extra beater bats in various different styles. From the very top, we have some more broomsticks, which say, feel free to test fly any of our brooms. Can you do that with the firebolt? Probably not, because it's a little too expensive, am I right? <laughs> in the corner, you'll find a treasure chest, which will feature another beater bat in addition to some quaffles. And we also have some more robes just folded up, probably different Quidditch teams, though it looks like it's just, again, the house colors. For this particular set. Next up we have Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor in addition to Flourish and Blot's bookstore. Now Flourish and Blot's actually comes with an extra accessory, that being this little desk which I guess better fits within the interior than the exterior. This desk is for Lockhart to stand or sit in front of while he's signing his book. Now we do happen to get some fake copies of his book from the side, I really wish that they stickered these as well but we do happen to get some 
real ones nevertheless, which are nice to include. One other thing I do have to say is that I am surprised that there is just a regular old quill and not some sort of fancy quill for Gilderoy. I think that would have been better, at least considering the circumstances. Now on to the facade of both of these shops. What a pop of color this shop is compared to the rest of Diagon Alley, which is kind of bleak as far as the color scheme goes, though it does look like Lego really amped it up as far as the color scheme and made it a little bit more brighter than what you would see within the films. I really love how this turned out. I love just the shade area up here and also just a little reference to the little ice cream stand here. I just love that they included that. I remember that from the Lego Harry Potter video games and it's just amazing to see it included here as well little light up here as well as a window for the second floor and we also get a brand new recolor for the door for this as well and i believe same thing goes for flourish and blots some loose pieces as well from the very front of this shop are the chairs which i did want to point out how those are built using the spike pieces for the legs which i think is a really interesting building technique not something i would have thought of and a nice little table for you to eat your ice cream on. Flourish and Blots include some books from the outside, and we also get these printed wall element pieces for the windows, which are really cool. I love how they made those specifically for this build. We get some stickers as well leading up. Bookseller, bookbinders, reading room, bookseller, reading room, and bookbinders again, just saying some of the things that you'll be able to find in here. We get the actual sign itself as a sticker, flourish and blots from both sides. And we also have these little dragon statues from the very top, which I think are really cute. We use that dragon headpiece, which was introduced in Lego Ninjago here, which is really cool. And I do have to talk about the roofs and just how nice and sleek those are with the slope pieces. And I also have to appreciate just the way that they did the roof here. It's just, it's great how the roofs are all different between the shops. They're all unique in their own way. Finishing off from the outside, I did want to say that we do happen to get some stickers on some of the wall elements from the sides of the buildings, hiding various details like, have you seen this wizard? We have our Sirius Black poster, which we actually have gotten a print for as of this year, 2023. You can also see your Technic pins, which will be the same as you'll see on all the other buildings. On to the interior, we have the ice cream shop, we get some glasses to put your ice cream in. Little display there, which I would think would have treats in it. Another little ice cream on the counter. I love the checkered floor. I think that's a great detail. And we also have some of the different uh, flavors over here, like chocolate with peanut butter and black beer and raisin. And of course, everyone's favorite bat juice and earwig. Kind of interesting flavors there. Might take the first one though. Right above that, we have a nice little nook for Mr. Fortescue with a little chair for him to relax and you can move that back and forth with the Technic connection. Really cool building technique for that. As well as for the lamp right there. Get some tea and a nice little rug. Just like Ollivander's wand shop, we have a nice spot where you can bring down the stairs to get up to the second level of Flourish and Blots. And I love that they include that detail, so if you do have these back to back, you will want to bring that up. And makes for easy storage as well. But great that they include a way to get up to the second floor, as you will want to go up there as there are more fake books, or not actually really any real books in here except for the ones that come with Lockhart's face on it. And then this one, which will include the common print from the time period, Swish and Flick Wingardium Leviosa. You know, another really cool thing about this is how they point to where the books are. Books about dragons, books about alchemy. <laughs> I think that's really adorable. And just the amount of books that they were able to pack in here, I think is enough. It's good enough. I'll also lift that back up just so then you can see that we have one of Lockhart's books on display over there, which will be that magical me just on a stickered tile piece instead of the regular book piece, just oversized. Before I finish up, I did want to say this desk should go out here somewhere. I just think that this is the perfect place to have that desk. If you want to have that book signing, you can have Lockhart right there. And of course, your students and other characters gathered round. 
On to the final build of this set, we have Weasley's Wizard Wheezes for the very first time. Now, we did actually get both Fred and George Weasley within the 2011 Diagon Alley, though we didn't see this shop. And as of this year, 2023, we are finally starting a modular style of Diagon Alley sets, and the first one they decided to release was Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, and I think this is probably one of the best decisions like it was ever made. I'm really excited to see what more sets we could get, especially re makes and at that scale it's going to be so much more affordable to a wider audience and people can pick and choose what shops they want and not just buy a set like this only to get the one shop that you really care about. Though to be completely honest I do care about each and every Harry Potter set so I do hope that quality does continue to improve. Who knows whether or not that'll stay the same in 2024. We'll have to wait and see what happens remake wise. Now in addition to Weasley's Wizard Wheezes we also do happen to get a tiny tiny slither of Nocturnally. We thought that that would be hinting at something. It's been three years now and nothing has come. I mean, we have gotten Gringotts, um, but this set is set to retire fairly soon. I might be mistaken. I know it's going to stick around long enough to fit with Gringotts Wizarding Bank, but still, if there was anything more planned to go that way or just to expand the other side of Diagon Alley, we probably would have had it by now and it's really, you know, it, it's too late. It's unfortunate. Just getting up close and personal, Nocturne Alley, you get a sticker and get a little shifted window. I like the tilt on that. I think it's nice just as like a tilted Nocturne Alley. <laughs> Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, as it should, is an eye popper as well with the vibrant orange. You get stickers all around with various words. I'm not going to read them. You can read them yourself. One thing that I do really like about the new one that just released this year in 2023 is the fact that we have those curved windows, which was what I was mentioning before with Ollivander's shop. What they could do to improve that in a smaller scale is have those curved windows like they do on the current Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. I think that would have made this look so much better instead of these straight on ones. I mean, yeah, again, this is really probably the most outdated part of the set. Otherwise, I think it's perfectly fine. You can see the body and the legs. For this big Weasley through the windows there, you get stickers on various tile pieces leading up to the arms, which you get that curve with the hinge plate, and of course the function from the very top in order to move the hat. I love that. That's a really cute feature. Really just wish that there was a bunny underneath and also wish that the head was a mold or a print or of some type. I mean, what they did this year in 2023 for the head, I think was fine. This, I think, is just a little a little weird in my opinion. But, you know, still nice that they include so many sticker details just to create this Fred and George Weasley display. One other thing that I have to appreciate about this building, color scheme wise, is just, you know, getting all of these lavender colored pieces, I think is really cool. And especially how they were able to include a lot of the different advertisements for like the edible dark mark down there which is amazing that they were able to include that in some way shape or form speaking of the roof design as i said before they're all varying styles based on what building it is i do really like just the way that they did the roofs for all of these buildings they just look really professional now i did have to change this back to the original in order to do this review if you guys check out my review for the 2023 version of weasley's wizard wheezes you can see me deck this set out with all of the different references all the snack boxes and such it's just crazy the amount of those that i was able to fit within here because lego gave me some extra sticker sheets because i was missing one which is why the review was late we're getting off topic Let's talk about some of the different details from the bottom here. We have Dancing Doxies, which is another great reference that they were able to include. They used the Doxies within the Skyving Snack Boxes to fix something or other. We have some other little boxes and potions and such. We have the Cash Register, which has a print on it for that little caution symbol, which has come in other sets before. Various other boxes and such in the background. Nothing really too descript. I also really love how we get the writing on the stairs, which is another reference that I just wasn't expecting them to include. They only include it up to a certain point, and then they stop. I also really like the railings and how colorful they are. Get those lollipops in the background. And also your basic blaze box right there, the fireworks that are made by the Weasleys. 
over here. I believe that rock may be referencing the instant darkness powder. I'm not certain. We have some common regular playing cards for muggles, muggle tricks, which they also sold within the shop. Other various joke items in the background. More stairs leading up to the next floor. I love that there's so many stairs just to bring you up to all the different levels. And finally, yeah, this actually might be where the darkness powder is supposed to be referenced with that mineral piece. I think they did a better job in the most recent set, 2023. And you have various other little objects in the background. Again, I really decked this thing out with so many different references when I got that 2023 set. And I mean, seriously, the amount of Weasley products that we now have in LEGO form, it's just amazing how far we've gone since this particular set. I almost forgot to show this, but we also have this little reference to the love potions, which is just plain old loose. You can just place that anywhere you want. Pretty simple build up. Really like how it turned out, especially color wise and getting those little heart pieces within this set. So overall for $400 or what is now $450, is this set worth it? Well, I definitely think this is one of the best Harry Potter sets that you can get as far as a expensive Harry Potter set goes. It's great for display. It's great for play. I really love just the amount of details in this set is really what gets me every single time. The interiors are just filled with so many different references that I absolutely love. As far as the minifigure selection goes, there are some problems with them. A lot of the figures we have seen come in more recent sets. Really, the only exclusive minifigures left in this set are Lucius Malfoy, though don't get this set for him. The Daily Prophet photographer, who cares about him. And then comes the real star of the show, two seconds in film, Florian Fortescue. Such a great minifigure. Facial expression comes in the Daily Bugle. I mean, to be completely honest, really the best minifigure in this set, hands down, is Gilderoy Lockhart, and that is really just because we get a cape with him. Lego is so fussy about those cape pieces on minifigures a lot these days, especially clones. So it's really great that we were able to get that with his minifigure. I also think it's an added bonus getting a mystery plaque in here. It's something that I never really thought LEGO would ever do. I'm really surprised that we haven't seen it appear again. I mean, what was the reception to that within the set? I mean, I guess when people reviewed it, especially the land members, when they initially reviewed the set, they showed it right away. They spoiled the contents, but I mean, Really, I just think it's something that they should go back to doing. I would love to see them have these little hidden surprises and sets because I just think it makes the building experience so much more fun, especially if you're someone who just goes in and buys a set, doesn't look at a review, which is something that I do very often, just m more so, I guess, for my job. I just think for the experience, it's something that they should do more of. Finishing up my thoughts on the buildings, they're just really extraordinary. The building techniques are amazing. Really the most outdated part of them have to be like the windows from the front of the Weasley shop and Ollivander's. I just think that if they were to remake this set, they'd have to have those curved windows from the front. And I don't think we're going to be seeing a diagonally at this scale anytime soon. I think they're going to try and stick to the current size that we're going to be getting with, say, the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes as of this year and continue that into 2024. Hopefully we start seeing more and more obscure shops as well pop up in that line because I think it could potentially be the best Diagon Alley lineup. I say potentially because I still love that interior for the Weasley shop, though still we got so many references in that 2023 set, which makes it so much better in my opinion as far as references go, which is at the end of the day, really what I'm looking for, I love seeing these references to the books and to the films and just all the little itty bitty things like pygmy puffs and all of that. Seeing the Firebolt in Quality Quidditch Supplies, the Lockhart book, and Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor is just something that I never really imagined we'd ever get in LEGO form and I'm so happy to have it exist within this particular set. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now and I will see you next time. Bye!